10 Poisons for Your Liver That Can Even Lead to Death Did you know that the liver is the largest internal organ we have and it operates continuously, day and night, to purify your blood, removing and processing toxins, as well as producing bile? It is also a vast repository of nutrients and energy. However, when this organ becomes sick, our entire body stops operating properly. Today, I will share with you 10 foods products, supplements, and vitamins that are harmful to your liver's health, potentially causing inflammation and fat accumulation in it. Over time, this can lead to cirrhosis. These products are often used in everyday life, and the problem is that they are often hidden in the foods we consume, or pharmaceutical companies and advertising campaigns make us believe they are harmless. But today, I will reveal what is usually not said. I will also guide you on how to avoid these products, what alternatives are available, and what to do to preserve your liver's health. Let's get started. Number one, sugar. Indeed, it's not just alcohol and fat that harm the liver. Sugar is also harmful and can be as or more addictive than alcohol. I want to highlight especially a type of sugar called fructose, often found in boxed juices that many believe to be natural. These juices contain an excessive amount of fructose. Fructose, a very common sweetener, is present in processed foods and is listed on labels under different names such as corn syrup, agave, and even honey. Additionally, it is found in sweets, sodas, and energy drinks. Therefore, it is crucial to read the labels of the products we consume. An important note, all fruits and vegetables contain fructose, as it is their natural sugar. However, when we eat a whole fruit, like an apple or an orange, we are not just ingesting fructose, but also fibers. These fibers help to absorb fructose more slowly, which is essential for liver health. If you frequently consume box juices, which generally do not contain fibers, you may be compromising your liver's health as you are ingesting pure fructose. On the other hand, whole fruit with all its fibers is excellent. It is proven that daily consumption of fruits reduces chronic inflammation in the body, prevents cancer, regulates diabetes, and fights many other diseases. The secret is in knowing how to consume fruits. When making juice, do not strain it. And when eating fruits and vegetables, prefer to consume them with peel when edible. For example, eat the apple with its skin and avoid sweetening the juice you prepare. Table sugar also turns into fructose in the body, so it's best to avoid it as much as possible, replacing your morning juice with a whole orange. Keep following to understand all the foods I will mention, as I am sure you consume some of them, and perhaps it is precisely these that are harming your liver and preventing your improvement. Number two, alcohol. It's not all as they tell you. When we consume alcohol, even in small amounts, our liver acts to convert the alcohol into a less harmful substance for our body. However, this action is paradoxical, as the resulting substances are still toxic and can damage the liver. Simply put, in the process of transforming alcohol into something less harmful, the liver itself suffers intoxication and damage. As a consequence, hepatic inflammation occurs, liver cells can die and deflate, leading to cirrhosis. This alcohol metabolism process involves various enzymes in the body, such as alcohol dehydrogenase. I am often asked, what is the safe amount of alcohol? Regarding the safe amount of alcohol that can cause damage, the scientific answer is that there is no recommended safe dose. Each person is different and has varying levels of this enzyme that metabolizes alcohol. Although it is unlikely that a small glass of red wine, consumed very occasionally, will cause significant damage, it is advisable to avoid it, especially if there is a tendency to overdo it. Number three, salt. For us, it is known that salt raises blood pressure and contributes to cardiovascular problems. However, Recent studies have revealed that excess salt also negatively affects the liver at a microscopic level. Too much salt can cause deformations, swelling, and even the death of liver cells, which can result in fibrosis. This, in turn, leads to the formation of scars and, eventually, to a harder liver, culminating in cirrhosis. What is often not mentioned is that most of the salt we consume does not come from what we add to food, but from the processed and canned foods we eat daily like ready-made lasagnas. Additionally, dishes prepared in restaurants tend to have a higher amount of salt to enhance flavor. I challenge you to not only avoid these types of foods, but also to replace common table salt with various seasonings. There are options like turmeric, cardamom, mustard, 
black pepper, and nutmeg. I, for example, use nutmeg in almost all my meals as it adds a wonderful flavor and helps to reduce excessive salt consumption, even in salads. Just grate a little nutmeg and add olive oil. Try it and you will be doing a great favor to your health. Number four, red meat. Due to the presence of proteins, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids, red meat, when consumed in large quantities, leads the liver to generate a substance that causes inflammation in the arteries. Additionally, its high content of saturated fat also triggers an inflammatory reaction in the body. However, it is not necessary to eliminate it completely from your diet. The ideal is to moderate the consumption of red meat to approximately 500 grams weekly, which corresponds to about five steaks. Whenever possible, opt to consume the meat cooked, roasted, or grilled, avoiding the fried version. Number five, trans fats. It is essential to avoid trans fats as much as possible. These are extremely harmful to your liver and are created by a process known as oil hydrogenation. In this process, the liquid oil, like the one used in frying, is converted into a solid fat at room temperature, such as margarine and the vegetable fats often used in bread, cookies, or in making cakes. Industries prefer trans fat because it is more economical and does not require constant refrigeration. Did you know that many of the delicious fried foods consumed in restaurants and fast food joints are prepared with these fats? And as there is no need to replace them frequently, they are reused repeatedly, a fact that is often omitted. This fat is so harmful that, in various places in the developed world, like in some states of the United States, its use is prohibited in industrialized foods and beverages. However, they are still found in many products. The problem is that they are also hidden in various extremely addictive foods, not limited to fast foods, fried foods, and hamburgers. For example, they are present in semi-ready pies, ice creams, microwave popcorn, fried chicken, and frozen pizzas, as they provide that crispy crust. It is important to always check the labels of the products you consume, where it will be indicated if they contain trans or hydrogenated fat. Now, how does this affect your body? When consumed, initially, your intestine does not process these fats well. This alters the intestinal flora and causes inflammation in the intestinal wall. As a result, micro ruptures occur in the intestines, increasing the permeability of this wall, which is not desirable. This allows toxins to enter the bloodstream, leading to chronic inflammation throughout the body, in addition to increasing abdominal and liver fat. Liver cells begin to swell and accumulate fat, leading some to death. Over time, this can cause scarring and hardening of the liver, resulting in cirrhosis. The increased flow of fatty acids to the liver can also cause insulin resistance, elevation of triglycerides, and blood cholesterol, Additionally, these fats directly harm your arteries, affecting blood circulation in the heart and brain. Number six, medications. Do you know that medication you take daily for headaches or fever? Paracetamol, if used improperly, especially in doses higher than four grams per day, can cause severe hepatitis and acute liver failure. This is one of the most toxic medications for the liver. Other drugs, such as aspirin and anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen and diclofenac, are also associated with serious cases of drug-induced hepatitis. These and many other over-the-counter medications can be particularly harmful, especially if used in conjunction with different herbs you may be consuming. The list is extensive, but the essence of my message is, do not self-medicate. Leave this responsibility to doctors or pharmacists, to health professionals who have been trained for this. Number seven, aflatoxins. But after all, what are aflatoxins? Believe it or not, you might be consuming them without knowing. These toxins are produced by fungi of the Aspergillus species and are extremely carcinogenic, potentially causing tumors in the liver. These fungi can easily contaminate various crops, including corn, rice, peanuts, coffee beans, and even dried fruits. How can we avoid exposure to this toxin? When consuming grains and dried fruits, try to acquire the freshest possible and ensure they have been stored correctly. After opening the package, consume them within a few days and store them in the refrigerator. Also, make sure that the foods are well sealed, away from insects, humidity, and excessive heat. And of course, discard any food that shows signs of mold or strange smell. These are indications of the presence of the toxin, which can slowly poison the liver without us realizing it. That peanut that sometimes has a slight taste of mold 
may contain this toxin. If you notice this flavor in the peanut, it is better to discard it and not buy more from that supplier. Tell us in the comments if you like peanuts, if you consume them regularly, and if you have a trusted place to buy them without that moldy taste. Number eight, supplements and vitamins. It is important to be cautious with the consumption of vitamin A, as the liver does not handle its excess well. This vitamin is present in various multivitamins and in capsules used to enhance or maintain tanning, known as beta carotene, which convert into vitamin A in the body. Excessive consumption of this vitamin can be toxic, leading to a condition known as hypervitaminosis A. This condition results in the excessive accumulation of vitamin A in liver cells, which begin to deposit collagen, forming scars in the liver, and significantly altering its function, potentially causing severe damage. If you want to obtain vitamin A, there is no need to resort to supplements. This vitamin is abundant in foods like carrots, mango, pumpkin, and eggs. Consume it through these natural foods. If you are considering buying a multivitamin supplement, check if it contains vitamin A, and if so, avoid it. If you maintain a balanced diet, rich in a variety of vegetables and legumes, especially those orange in color, you will already obtain the necessary amount of vitamin A. Taking additional supplements can result in the intoxication of your liver cells. Number nine, dairy products. It is advisable to consume dairy products in moderation. Foods like milk and its derivatives, including yogurts and cheeses, contain high levels of proteins and fats that can overload the liver and lead to fat accumulation in this organ, especially if consumed in large quantities. It is worth noting that dairy products are important sources of calcium and vitamin D, essential for bone health. However, for those concerned about liver health, alternatives like almond milk, soy or rice milk can be healthier options as they are less fatty. Additionally, choosing low-fat versions of traditional dairy products can help reduce the risk of liver overload. It is important to balance the diet with a variety of foods to ensure adequate nutrition without overburdening the liver. Number 10, rice and breads. White rice and bread, which are refined foods, are processed and absorbed quickly by the body. This rapid processing can cause abrupt spikes in blood sugar levels, favoring fat accumulation in the body. Excessively consuming these high glycemic index carbohydrates can be harmful to liver health, as it increases the risk of developing fatty liver disease. This condition is characterized by excessive fat accumulation in liver cells, potentially leading to inflammation and more serious liver damage in the long term. Therefore, it is recommended to opt for lower glycemic index carbohydrates, such as whole grains, which are absorbed more slowly and help maintain stable blood sugar levels. Avoiding everything I mentioned and adopting healthy habits, such as consuming anti-inflammatory foods, you will be taking care not only of your liver's health, but of your entire body. I hope this video has been useful in some way. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.